I'm Andy McGibbon, the founder of TheAndyGram.com. I'm talking with Dave Lefkowitz on Dave's Gone By on UNC Radio. Here on the Total Theater Tony Special on this Saturday morning before the Tony Awards. Very happy to welcome someone back that's been on a couple of times, and also someone that I have known for nearly two decades. We worked at the same place for a few years. In fact, he is one of the founders and originators of Playbill.com, where I was for a few years. He has also managed the Tony Awards website for nearly a decade. He is the founding editor of the Andy Graham Dot com, which is still in existence, and the brand new site, Andrew McGibbon Photography dot com. His name is and well, I call him Andy McGibbon. I guess you're Andrew now that you're doing the photography thing. But how are you, Andy Andrew? I'm very well, David. Dave. <laughs> well, what's with the, uh, the the sudden going back to your full name? Do photographers are they expected to have longer and more serious names? Well, I, I think I just like to see Andrew in print. I prefer Andrew to Andy in print. People just call me Andy. Well, you, you did name your first site the Andygram, where you do your reviews and your, your articles about the theater. Well, it happened to work. Yeah, it sounds good, Andy Graham. But Andrew McGibbon Photography, that sounds really interesting. It's not just that you go and do weddings and things like that. You do virtual tours of stores. Can you tell us exactly what, what you mean by that? Sure, I'm a Google trusted photographer. I shoot panoramas of the insides of businesses that then connect with Google Maps and Google Plus pages and Google search results. So you can actually walk from the street in Google Maps right into a business. Whoa. They're stitched together so you can actually move from one panorama to another panorama and actually walk through the theater and turn around and look around. You've done about 13 stores already with many, many more to come. And if people are interested in hiring Andy, it's andrewmcgibbonphotography.com. But we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about the Tonys and the theater, which you still review for theandygram.com. So let's jump to the Tony category of lead actor in a musical that we're going to talk about. The nominees are Michael Cerberus for Fun Home, Robert Fairchild, An American in Paris, Brian Darcy James in Something Rotten, Ken Watanabe in The King and I, and Tony Yazbek in The Revival of On the Town. Andrew McGibbon, your thoughts? My thoughts? Well, it's not as stiff a category as lead actress in a musical, but it is certainly up there. This is a very talented field. Two people are making their Broadway debut here. We've got uh, Robert Fairchild from New York City Ballet, mm -hmm. uh, and we also have Ken Watanabe. These two gentlemen are up against, let's see, we have Michael Cerberus for Fun Home, and that's, this is Michael's sixth nomination. He's won once for Assassin. Brian's R.G. James, this is Brian's third nomination. Tony Yazbak, uh, another relative newcomer, coming in on the town. These gentlemen all turn in amazing, amazing performances. Some of them require a little more energy than others. You know, American in Paris, there's a lot of dancing on the town, a lot of dancing and singing at the same time, a lot of heavy movement. Then there's the quieter roles, you know, Michael Service's fun home role. He is not doing any, you know, he's not doing wings in this show. Right. Like that one. So, who's going to win? Hmm, that's a good question. The person I want to win and the person who I think will win. Uh huh. Are one and the same. I have a feeling it's going to be Mr. Watanabe for the. Really? I really do. I think one, it is a, and as much as I hate to say this, it is a Tony winning role. I think that there are just some roles that just really aren't quite the type of role that, that would normally get one a Tony. For example, Brian Darcy James in, in Something Rotten. He is marvelous, off the chart, wonderful. You know, it's sort of like comedies not getting Oscar nominations, yeah. you know? It's a lighter role. It's a comedic role. Mr. Watanabe gets to showcase his acting chops in a role that he's doing in not his native tongue. Well, that's been the I mean, one strike against him. A lot of critics have said, and I agree, I mean, I saw this King and I and loved it, and I thought he was terrific, except for the fact that there were times, especially when he was singing, that I could not understand a word he said. I overcame it. Okay. I must say, I, I agreed, I read the reviews, I agreed initially, but then, quite honestly, it became, it added to the authenticity of the whole thing to me. This is the way this man if he were speaking in English, would have spoken. I just think that Tony voters love an underdog. And I think in this case, because of the language barrier, I think he's going to win. 
I mean, I just think that there's going to be, I think, a revival of Children of a Lesser God in the next season or two. And I worry, you know, I wonder if the deaf actress in there, if we're all going to say, well, we don't have to understand what she's saying. We're not supposed to. Uh, I don't want to let it slide in that way. I don't know. I also wonder, was my difficulty in understanding him lessened because I am so familiar with the show. I mean, I, I was a former stage manager and a former actor at one point in my life and did the show twice. Oh, uh -huh. So you know all the lyrics to It's a Puzzlement, yeah. Precisely, precisely. So perhaps that's it, but I did feel it was a very, very emotionally connected performance. I, oh, yes. I really, I, I, I loved it. And you think the Tony voters will will respond to that, and because the role is such a, a Tony grabber kind of a role, that Watanabe will probably get this over Cerberus and Fairchild and James and Yazbek. I, Cerberus, I think, is the closest to him as far as having a shot. Servers? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. But again, you know what? I, I mean, listen, the Apple Card could be upset by one of these newcomers. Well, Watson is a newcomer also, but Robert Fairchild, an American in Paris, I mean, that was a heck of a role. It's singing, dancing, mm. it's got everything. If we see an American in Paris kind of a sweep, he could certainly be swept along with that. But let me ask you, Andy, Andrew, excuse me, Andrew McGibbon, if you had to pick your favorite show of the season. I adored Fun Home. I mm. think Fun Home is smart, is witty, is melodic, is mesmerizing, and beautifully directed. Everything from the set to the lighting. And that's a hard space to, that's a hard space to work in. They're in circle in the square, so they're in the round, literally. Uh, the configuration of the theater for that, for circle in the square, is not always in the round. Sometimes it's three quarters like we saw last year with Lady Day. Mm. Uh, but this time it's, it's 360. To light a show in that environment is, is tough, and to direct a show in that environment is tough. And I just think they did a beautiful job with it. I really, really, really loved it. If I had to say, what do I hope sweeps, it's that. So you're hoping for Fun Home to get Best Musical, there's score, I'm sure it's up for score, and several other things. Although, you would go with Watanabe just a little bit over Cerberus as far as the actor there. I, I would, I would, but you know what? Anything's possible. Who knows? <laughs> if, if there's one thing about the theater uh, that we all know, it's that nobody knows anything. Amen. We, but I do know that it has been a pleasure once again to talk to Andrew McGibbon, my old friend and co-worker. Remember that not only does he do andrewmcgibbonphotography.com, but please visit theandygram.com for his reviews. And it's not just you, right? There's other things on the Andygram? That is correct. I have another couple of writers who handle uh, other cities for me and off-Broadway. And you never know who's going to pop up on the Andygram. Well, you have to go to theandygram.com to see. And we're happy to see you once again with us here in the neighborhood for The Tony Show. Thanks so much, Andrew. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate it. Bye-bye now.